Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the Pacific Invincible sets of 1996, 97, and 2001. Pacific created Invincible as kind of a counterpoint to Dynagon. The two sets were created at the same time. They both lasted 96 and 97, and then they both came back in 2001, which is kind of interesting. They were not two different takes on a theme, they were just two different ideas, and they worked in a very similar way. Now, Dynagon deserves its own video, so I'll be talking about that separately. But for Invincible, this is, this is an exploration of a, a very interesting card in terms of this was just a very distinct idea that they came up with. And it's based upon the idea of putting a, a cell of acetate inside of a card. So it's a little bit of a window. And that's what acetate is. So acetate is basically a sheet of plastic. And by putting that into a card, you can have a window, and then you can actually have an image on the window which just, it's not a great idea, but it's an interesting idea. And that's, that's kind of the idea of the set was, it, it was something that they tried and it was a fun little thing that they created, but there was nothing really endearing about it. But that was, that was what Pacific was doing. They were just kind of throwing some interesting ideas out, whether they were a good idea or a bad idea, it didn't matter. And it helped to really enrich the whole world of football card collecting. So like I said, Invincible was a 1996 creation. And this was a card that was all almost all gold foil on the front. It's a big explosion of stuff. It's got some different kinds of patterns. It's got patterns within the gold foil. It's got patterns between the gold foil. It has a lot of brightness to it. And that's really about the only way to, to describe it. On the card back, it also has uh, stuff. I mean, this, this was a set that was not intended to tell you anything about the player. It was not intended to remind you of anything. This was a card that existed simply to be a card. That's what this set was. And that's all that we received it for. You wanted to put together the set. You didn't even really look at the back. I mean, could you even read anything on the back? Eh, maybe, maybe not. You never even thought about it. Instead, you tried to collect the set and the parallels. And the parallels is really what this set is about, specifically, three parallels. So Pacific liked to do gold cards. That was that was kind of their thing, gold foil on pretty much all their cards. And so anytime that they did parallels, they started off with a gold card as their base. And they liked to do metals. So they liked to have a gold card, a silver parallel, and a copper parallel. In this case, they had both of those, but they also had a platinum parallel. Now, in truth, platinum looks very similar to silver. So they did not do a, a true platinum. Instead, they did a blue card, which they called platinum blue, but it's the same idea. Gold, silver, copper, and platinum blue. The cards are a 100 card set, and they do have rookies in them, and the rookies are all in their college uniforms, so they, they, look, they look different from everybody else. And they did something interesting with Jeff Blake. In this case, they, they created a braille card. They took all the information off the back, not that there was a lot of information on the back, but they put braille on there instead. Not a lot of braille, but a little bit of braille. It was a neat thing that they had done. Action Pack had done this years before with a Jim Plunkett card. So it was a neat little, little quirk. But they had a tough time kind of getting it to work. So there aren't as many of these cards as, as you would normally encounter. But also note, this is only the base card. They did not do this with the parallel. So only the base Jeff Blake actually has this treatment to it. And that was kind of the only thing that really stood out in the set. Otherwise, it was just 100 cards. It was basically go through all the teams and they had parallels. That was the set. But that's, that's all the set needed to be. And they did do a couple of insert sets. They did their Kickstarters. And Kickstarters was, again, a ton, ton of gold on the front. It was, it was die cut with kind of a football shape in it. It was stars in the, in the league. That was really about all there was to it. Really cool cards. Love these cards. But you know that, that's basically what it was. And they also did a Pro Bowl set, which had more of a chrome finish over the front, and it was Pro Bowl players. But you know, again, that's, that's what you were doing. You were just trying to collect these cards, and they were all really neat cards to collect. But they also did another insert set, which was their Smash Mouth card set. And the Smash Mouth cards were, uh, uh, this is something Pacific started to do, because in 1992, they did their set with a player by the name of Ben Coates. And Ben was a tight end with the New England Patriots, and he was he was just another guy. He was somebody who nobody really thought of. He just happened to show up in the set, 
And then all of a sudden he became a big star. And when that happened, everybody realized that he only had one rookie card. Now, this isn't all that unusual for some of the stars because guys from, from earlier on, like John Elway and Dan Marino, they only had one rookie card as well. But now here we are in the 90s and the guy only had one rookie card, which was really unusual. And so his card became really popular and Pacific understood this. They understood that that card really put the company on the map. So they wanted to start playing around with some ideas of these, these various sets where they didn't have to worry about what cards you were chasing in the set. They could have a bunch of additional players in, in various sets that would show up in packs that you could, they were extra cards. And so you could just have these cards around and then maybe at some point, one of those cards becomes really popular. Like, hey, I don't know, maybe Adam Vinatieri shows up on a card. And so they, they started doing these specialty sets that were just, they were filler cards, really. Filler cards with card numbers on the back, and that's what they were. And for Invincible, they did a, a set called Smash Mouth. Now, Smash Mouth was primarily veterans. This wasn't really intended to find those hot new players that everybody had overlooked. But this was an opportunity to, to get more like offensive linemen into their card set. So as a team collector, you've got your main stars that are in the main set. And then in Smash Mouth, you get a couple of other guys you wouldn't normally run into, along with your veterans. So it was an interesting card set that they created, just kind of filler in there. But a, a nice little thing to do because, again, it kind of expanded out the number of players that were available. They also did a little 10 card set of Chris Warren. So Chris Warren at this point was their spokesman. And this set was just cards of Chris Warren. That's all there was to it, but still those were in, their, in those packs. For 1997, they did basically the exact same thing. The cards here were really, really well designed. They got a good balance. They really put a lot of thought and effort into how the design really looked. The cell looked a lot better. Interestingly, when you turn the card over, the helmet doesn't have the emblem on the back because it's reversed on the, on the card back. And it, it looks kind of weird. So it's almost like all the cards are now like Steelers cards with these cells for the 1997 set, which was, it was a really good idea that they did. It's not the kind of thing you would have thought of until you've turned the card over and all of a sudden the emblem's gone, but it, it was a good move that they made. It was, it was clearly thinking through. The cards also continued the tradition of really not having anything on the back, but again, it was a 100 card set just of veterans and a couple of rookies that you were chasing really for the, the parallels. So they didn't, they didn't gussy it up with any additional elements because you didn't need it. So these cards did have the rookies in their, in their college uniforms like before, and that's, that's basically the set. They did have the parallels with the silver and the copper and the platinum blue. But they also added a red to this, and the red foil really looks great. This was a great addition that they made to this set, and it also means that if for whatever reason you just decide that you want to, to put these cards into binders in a way where it you have all the 96 and all the 97 cards with all the parallels together into the binders, you can actually do that. So you can have all the Dan Marino cards together, all the Emmett Smith cards, all the Jerry Rice cards, you actually have four in one set, five in the other, and you can combine them together to have all nine on one page. That gets a little tricky with, say, Jim Druckenmiller, because he doesn't have a corresponding card in 1996, and you can't team him up with Terrell Owens, because Terrell Owens did have a 97 card, so you got to play some tricks. And I know this because I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do this in the binders, but you actually do have the ability to do that, if you care. Their insert cards got a lot better this year. So here they started off with a, another Chromium card. This was their Canton cards. And Canton, Ohio, and then the zip code for Canton, Ohio is the official name of the set. And these cards are, are very basic cards. They're much better designed than the Pro Bowls from the, the previous year. And then they did another Chromium set called Moments in Time. This is a die cut card. And it basically just looks at a really good game that each of the players had. And these are, these are also pretty well designed. They're not as good as the Canton cards. This is kind of the, the low point for all these cards, but they also did that. And then they also did their pop cards. And pop cards were based on, in the, in the main set, 1996 for Pacific, they did something called card supials. And this was a, a double thick card where they didn't seal the, the middle of the card. So the front and the back actually had a pocket that they used to stick a little card in, card supial for kangaroos. And so they, they continued the same idea, but they did this for a contest. And the way that it works is in the middle of the back of the card, they have a one quarter size card area that is perforated. 
So they actually have a perforated card, a non-perforated card. They stick it together, but they only glue around the outside. And so if you take the, the corner or part way into the card and you bend it a little bit, the corner of that, that little perforated panel inside will come loose and you can stick your fingernail or something else inside and actually peel out a whole inner little pocket that is a quarter card inside. And each one of these cards, there are 10 cards in the pop card set, each one of these has four of these little cards that go with it. They're all very clearly numbered. And so if you're able to get all four of one of the cards, or if you were able to, you could then send those in and get a prize card from it. Now the trick is that for every one of those pop cards, there's only one of the four. So that means you need four cards, four of the pop cards, to be able to get the little pieces inside, but it's also completely random, which means that you could have a John Elway card and it has, say, a Jerry Rice quarter card inside of it, which means you gotta, you gotta pop a lot of these things in order to put together the set. You can see from the cards that I have here that I don't have very many of these cards. In fact, with John Elway specifically, even though I collect him, I've only got one of the four. They're kind of tough to find because people mo usually throw them away or they never take them off the cards. And I'm not complaining about people who aren't taking them off the, the back of the cards. I think it's a really good thing that they do that, but it makes it very difficult to find these little tiny tiles that, that come with the cards. So that is the way that the pop cards work. You had a main card, you have a little card inside, and when you pop that little card off, there's actually a picture of the player in the back but you also have the four of those little cards for each one, so there are 40 of those total. And then you have the prize card, which is a foil version of the four little panels with obviously a back that doesn't talk about the prize. And then they did their Smash Mouth again, and the Smash Mouth here is much better designed than the previous year, but they also did another extra set, which was Smash Mouth Extra. And the Smash Mouth Extra set is it's a smaller set it's a little bit more rare but at, at the end of the day the cards are are fairly similar in value the cards are a little bit better designed it's more focused on the stars but those two sets do exist in the set and then they also had a john elway contest where this isn't related to cards this is just a, a contest itself those cards tended to pop up in these packs for for whatever reason you'll see them from time to time but they're, understand those are just a contest that has really nothing to do with Pacific. For the most part, it doesn't. But like Chris Warren the previous year, in 1997, Mark Brunel was the spokesman for Pacific. And so they did have a Mark Brunel set. And this set actually runs across the Pacific family. So you'll see these cards pop up in Invincible and in other packs as well. Now, after 1997, I don't know why they stopped doing this, but there were a number of sets that Pacific did that were two years in a row. And so both Dynagon and Invincible were an idea they came up with. They had it going for two years, and then it disappeared. But with Pacific, it didn't really matter because they kept coming up with interesting new sets shortly thereafter. So once these were gone, we figured that we'd never see them again. However, in 2001, both Invincible and Dynagon did come back for one more time. And I don't know if this was just because they were already starting to run on Ether. I mean, they really wouldn't continue past 2002, so it might be that they were just trying to find anything to keep, keep the company going. And bringing back a popular set from the past might have been a good move for them to make. Regardless, they came up with an Invincible set that was inspired by the 1990s cards. Here it was only four years later, but boy, the industry had already changed. And right from the beginning, you can see it in terms of how they were dealing with not just not so much the cards themselves, I mean, a bit with the cards, but with how they designed the cards and, and built the set out. The set in this case has 300 cards. There are 250 that are veterans, and then an additional 50 rookie cards at the end. All stuffed at the back, again, all in their college uniforms, but more rare. This is the new Millennium cards, so of course the rookies are going to be more rare. They're going to be like a separate set that you got to collect. And that's, that's the first distinction that they have in the cards. The card design itself is not dynamic and vibrant and lively and creative. It's very blocky, very, very simplified. They have basically a big area of foil behind the player, and then over on the side they have a bunch of details with a serial number. So all these cards are ser serial numbered but they did come as hobby and retail. So the hobby cards come with copper foil and the retail versions come with silver foil, no serial number and much thinner stock. So they already had that distinction going on that was very different from, from previous, the previous releases. They did not do gold cards this year, which was kind of interesting. So they started off with copper and they had silver and then the first parallel was red. 
and the second parallel was blue, and then the third parallel was back to the copper, but instead of being serial numbered up at the top, they have a little premium date tag with the serial number in it, serial numbered out of 55. So the red cards are numbered out of 750, the blue cards are numbered out of 250, and the premium date is numbered out of 55. That's how the set was built. The rookies, however, are more, are more rare. Again, the retail cards are not serial numbered, but the hobby cards are serial numbered out of 250, the red cards are serial numbered out of 199, and the blue cards are numbered out of 99. And the premium date, still out of 55. So at the 55 level, the regular cards and the rookies all show up at the same rate. It's kind of an, an equaling component. And also, some of these cards come with jerseys. So at the base level, only rookies come with jerseys. And then you, you find veterans in the red and you can find veterans in the blue. And to the best of my knowledge, none of the premier date cards have any jerseys in them. So it appears to be all the other ones that do. I've, I've seen no record of it. I don't, I don't, so I'm pretty sure that none of the premier dates came that way. But as far as the other ones do, the jerseys show up in different places. So anytime that you find a, a player with a jersey swatch on one of the cards, you're not gonna find it on any of the other parallels. So that's kind of how it's built. You're going to have a hobby version, a retail version, which is silver, a red version, a blue version, and a premier date. You're going to have only those five, and any one of those could come with a jersey or without. Not both, it's either or. So you're not gonna have a red card that has a jersey and has none. If it has a jersey, that's the only way that it comes. I gotta kind of distinguish this because it, it's really tough to work with this. It's, it, for starters, it's difficult to stack these cards up as you're working on it because those jersey cards, they, they really kind of can't everything. So I actually have all of my jersey cards separated out. So I have one deck that is the main cards and then I have the jersey cards separate. And I, you know, working with the numbers is, is a pain, but when you get them into binders, it actually kind of balances out. Now the inserts are all pretty basic, but there are a lot of inserts and they are all serial numbered. So it gets, it gets a little tricky to work with them. So the first one is Afterburners and Afterburners is a very bright orange card and these are serial numbered out of 2000. Then you have Fast Forward. This is a more subdued card. This is kind of the, the one card you're really, really not gonna notice in this set. It's actually a nice card. It just doesn't really stand out amongst the rest and it's serial numbered out of 1000. Then you have Heat Seekers, which is numbered out of 750, and this is a die cut card. And it's a pretty cool die cut element because it basically has a football with some flames after it and the flames disappear into the die cut portion of the card. So it's a neat effect that they went with. And then they have their XXXVI card. And this is, this is talking about the Super Bowl. It's not players who have been in the Super Bowl. It's just the theme is regarding the Super Bowl. So it's basically the players who are trying to get there, trying to get to the game. Again, this is all die cut. These are num serial numbered out of 499, so they're a lot more rare. But this, this set is, it has a really cool component on the back because it not only is serial numbered, but they also did the serial number in Roman numerals. So that's a, that's a cool thing that they do. It's really confusing to look at it, but if you're, if you're still trying to get used to Roman numerals, these cards are actually, they'll actually give you a decent little, little lesson on how it works. Then they did their rookie die cuts and these are serial numbered out of 100. These are again, die cut. They're not very heavily die cut, but they're the rarest of all the rookies. Then they have new sensations and this is serial numbered out of 1250. Again, these are rookies. This is kind of a deep blue card and really kind of nice and it's you know basically another rookie card and then they have their school colors set and this is kind of a kind of a frenetic set basically what they do is they're looking at, at players that all went to the same college and so each card is of a different player and they have the the colors of the school that they went to so you, if you're looking at the wolverines you can look at veteran players and you can look at rookie players who all came from the same school so it, it's kind of cool in in regards to doing that but unfortunately they didn't do enough theming on the cards for each school to really read amongst all of the different cards. They just used the same color, but there are a number of colleges who use each of the colors. So it, it can get a little bit confusing, but it was a nice idea. And this is a very big set, I mean, a really, really big set. And the cards are pretty common. They're numbered out of 2,750. So these cards are, you're gonna be finding these all over the place. And it does take a while to finish the set because it's so big. And then the set finishes up with widescreen. This is a really nice card. It's a very thin, thin border on the top and on the bottom, and it kind of it does a really good job of showcasing the the scene, the horizontal scene in in the middle. 
and it's a good way basically kind of to kind of finish up the set the the set is this set really is more about the inserts than it is about the parallels it's crazy across the board and this is the kind of thing where they were expecting for you to just spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars buying these cards and collecting the packs and i i mean they obviously didn't make another set so i don't know how well this worked but it makes it a really really difficult thing to pursue because there's so much to go after but the the 1990s cards are a lot more fun because they're the sets are smaller it's more focused and they look a lot better than than these cards these cards are the ones you collect for the sake of collecting to get it all done the other ones were were a lot more fun but that's kind of the story of of card collecting the 90s was amazing and then when the 90s was over everything just kind of kind of flattened out and nobody nobody really knew what they were go what they were doing and so this is a great example of just how much could change just crossing that 1999 barrier. But that was, that was it. This is, there's a lot to talk about with Pacific. This is just one little window in it. And then I, obviously I'll have Dynagon coming up pretty soon. In, in the case of when I'm filming this right now, I, I have a long way to go with the 2001 Dynagon because there's nothing intriguing about that either for me to really have pursued it. So it's going to take a little while. I apologize if you're seeing this video at a fairly recent time and want to see the Dynagon video. But, you know, it's, you do what you can when you, when you can. So that is Invincible. And if, uh, if you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll check out other videos that I've done. I uh, hope, hope that you subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.